Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RegGamer.com video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours, and doing some analysis as well. This video is very Intel-focused, despite the fact that the 8700K and its Coffee League brethren are officially available, there is still a lot of Intel news, which uh, is very interesting. We're going to start things out with the Intel... Um, upsetting overclockers and also some motherboard manufacturers because they're no longer providing per core turbo frequencies then we're going to move over to the 8700k ultra edition uh, which is actually created by overclockers we'll go into that in a moment plus also discuss a little bit on 8700k overclocking and then we're going to finish the video with tiger lake because What's better than 6 cores, 12 threads? No, don't say Ryzen. We're going to instead say Tiger Lake. This one's quite cool. But, as I said, we're going to start things out with the uh, turbo frequencies per core. Very quick aside, I've actually just received the uh, MSI X399 board and also a Threadripper 1950X. So that review is coming up over, well, as soon as possible. I've got to order a cooler for it. Um, on top of that, I have basically finished half of the interview with Neil Trevitt for the NVIDIA side. So hopefully I'm going to get that up tomorrow. And then there'll be the Vulcan side, which will probably be up a few days later. The rest of the stuff is going to come up as quickly as possible. Now, uh, back on to the news itself. On with the show. So... Even before the 8700K and its ilk were launched, one thing was running around the internet. I didn't really want to say much because I wanted to see if things changed on release. And that is that there was no actual per-core turbo frequencies that were announced. Now, uh, Extreme Tech uh, actually grabbed some uh, details on this. I'd like to thank viewer Joe for sending this over. I'm going to read this out verbatim. We're no longer disclosing this level of detail as it's proprietary to Intel. Intel only specifies process frequencies for base and single core turbo in our frequency marketing and technical collateral, such as ARC, and not the multi-core turbo speed frequencies. We're aligning our communications to be consistent. All turbo frequencies are opportunistic given their dependency on system configuration and workloads. Okay, that's not ideal. Because there is a couple of issues with that. The first thing is that not all Intel processors scale linearly like this. They're not all as aggressive, I guess is the best way of putting it. Therefore, the 8700K has 4.3 GHz. We all know that. That's, of course, if it's running on all six cores. So does that mean it's a 4.3 GHz processor, then? Well, yes and no. Because if you're only running a single core, it hits more like 4.6 to 4.7. Now the reason I say more like is obviously it does depend on what's going on. And that's the issue. So uh, the basic bottom line is generally if you have fewer processor cores, or sorry, if you have fewer processor cores which are functional or working, the clock speeds go higher. This is obviously because of heat, power consumption. You get the idea. The problem is, though, this is not necessarily always the case, because in some instances, product generations also differ. The other issue, and this one's more perhaps going to affect motherboard vendors and also overclockers, is that a lot of motherboard vendors don't actually implement Turbo Boost too well. So, it's, it's very frustrating, because what we're going to start having now is not only do you have to concern yourself with the motherboard itself but also the processor so it's it's going to really make things more difficult to dial things in uh, this is kind of outside the scope of this video because it is more of a news video uh, with some technical analysis rather than you know an entire deep delve into uh, intel overclocking but i will link the extreme tech uh, article which does go deeper into this if you are curious I don't like this personally, um, especially given the fact that some of these processors are K. Like, if it's an 8600K or an 8700K, it kind of pisses me off. Excuse the excuse the French, but it, it does annoy me because, well, it's supposed to be overclocking in mind. So I kind of want to know that stuff ahead of time. Okay, now this is not an official Intel product. I just want to clarify this because some people are going to be like, what, there's another 8700K and probably, you know, start freaking out no 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 so this is the ultra edition 
for some reason, whenever I hear that word ultra, it just makes me think of Killer Instinct. Ultra! Sorry. Uh, so Case King and the Bower are deciding to, well, do the whole deleting thing. Burnt go absolutely crazy with it. What does this mean? Well, essentially you can just buy a pre-binned chip, but also it's deleted. Not only that, but the heat spreader itself, the new one that's plonked on, is made from 99.9% .9 silver. So obviously there are different levels of this, and I won't read out all of them because I'll be here until Christmas, but you can get, for example, a 8700K, which is guaranteed to run at 5.2 gigahertz, and that's going to cost you essentially 700 euros. Now, you can get a lot of these different chips, um, and obviously all of them have different guarantees of frequency, obviously, and you're of course going to sing along with me here. It does depend on your cooling. Like if you're basically just aiming a little mini fan at it and uh, that's about your lot, then, well, they can't guarantee that. But assuming you've got a decent AIO or whatever, in theory, you should be able to get the appropriate clock speed. So it's kind of cool. The issue is you're basically paying twice the price for CPU. Is that worth it to you? Well, if you have the cash, yes. Frankly, I would, at that point, if I'm going to spend 700 bucks, I'd rather put it on a Threadripper. That's just me. Um, obviously, your money, your thing, that's down to you. For gaming, however, if gaming is your thing, and yes, I'm going to get some people comment in that, you know, the Threadrippers are good for gaming, and I'm not disputing that, but if gaming is your thing, the 8700K is a very good processor, so maybe this would be worth it. Speaking of it might be worth it, just another tiny little thing, and this is also from the Bauer himself, he has managed to, well, <laughs> yeah, he's doubled the clock speed of a uh, 8700K. So the Bauer actually hit 7.3 gigahertz. Now that's impressive, without a question. However, someone else managed to get even higher. What? A he scream higher? <laughs> yeah. Now, admittedly, we are not talking about a basic cooler here, of course. Uh, instead, we have the 8700K. Uh, this is from, and I'm probably going to butcher the man's name, so I apologize, or oh, assume it's a man, uh, Kuvan Yang. And he has managed to hit, ready? 7,405 megahertz. That is insanity. Now, I know some people dislike the whole extreme overclocking, but this is a very good sign. This is like, this is hitting the same kind of clock speed within the margin of error anyway that Celeron Ds were hitting, like the 360s and Pentium 4s were hitting. That's really cool. Uh, well, if you excuse the expression. So, just, you know, for your FYI. Anyway, uh, final piece of news, and this one comes to us from Segment Next. I'd also like to thank another viewer for this piece of information. His name is Kyle, so thanks very much to him. So this I can't verify because supposedly it's Chinese sources. I've tried to do a bit of due diligence, but I couldn't find the origin for this. But um, anyway, to cut a long story short, and yes, brevity sometimes is something I can do. Not very often, I grant you. What we have is the 2017 to 2019 roadmap for Intel. And with that, we have two very interesting set of uh, results. The first, or well, not results, but uh, ses uh, processes. Bloody hell, I got there eventually. Anyway, so currently uh, we're looking at the 8600, 8700, 8750, which is not out yet, quite interesting. So that tells us that that's going to be based on Canon Lake. Then we get, and this is where, I want a drum roll please, if you can do that in your head that would be great, I don't want to deafen people. Uh, after that we're going to hit the 9600, 9700, 9750. Now those little suckers are going to have 8 cores, 16 threads. The beauty of them however, and this by the way is Ice and Tiger Lake, I've uh, kind of not mentioned this because it's on screen after all. However, this is where it gets really interesting. We also see Canon Lake X. Now, you can you can read those on screen yourself. So once again, I'm not going to go through all of these because there's just way too many. And frankly, it would be freaking boring. Currently, of course, we've got 18 cores, 36 thread. Uh, I, I noticed that, and this is one thing that did 
concern me about the leak, there are some spelling errors. One of those is Fred, for example, is consistently spelled wrong. Uh, you can see it's Tread. So I don't know if this is an Intel uh, mode map that's just been copied and pasted, or whether this is leak, whether it's because it's Chinese, whether it, I don't know. Uh, as I said, I'm just reporting what Segment Next are saying. So basically, I'm throwing them under the bus, essentially. But anyway, if this, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this is true. Even, even, okay, even if the leak's false, as in like this is just made up, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be roughly on par with what we see. Anyway, um, so currently, of course, we've got 18, uh, 18 cores, 36 threads. That's with Skylake X. Its successor, which, wait for it, Canon Lake X. That thing is going to have up to 22 cores, 44 threads, of course, hyper-threading. There are some differences. We see a slight increase in cache. Of course, it's still using the LGA 2066 socket. Memory speeds see an increase as well from 2,666 to 2,800. Okay, I grant you, not a big increase, but, you know, it is quad-channel, so that's still pretty damn impressive in terms of memory bandwidth. And, of course, it's going to be 10 nm. What does all of this mean? Well, it's going to be a very interesting couple of years, assuming these results are accurate. There are also a lot of other changes. You can see some AVX uh, changes and, you know, core, uh, sorry, memory config changes and other bits and pieces. And of course, clock speeds do slightly vary as well. One of the things I've noticed is that clock frequencies, for example, if we look at the 8990X topmost, uh, which is in the blue, you can see it's got 22 uh, 22 cores, 44 threads, with a turbo frequency of 3 gigahertz. does have 22 cores. However, the 18-core 36-thread Skylake X currently has uh, 2.6 gigahertz for the base, so it's got 400 megahertz of a deficit compared to the 8990, but the turbo frequency also is ever so slightly slower, so 4.1 gigahertz of the 8990 compared to Skylight X's 4.2. So it's quite finicky, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of this stuff does change. I wouldn't be surprised if clock speeds in particular change, but it is very interesting. To me, of course, the winner, the WinRa, if you will, is undoubtedly going to be the i7s and i5s on the mainstream sockets. So six, eight, eight, um, sorry, eight cores, 16 threads, I was about to say 16 cores, for, and the same number of threads. That was a, that would be very weird. But anyway, if Ice Lake does really have eight cores, 16 threads, or treads, if you prefer, it's going to have 16 treads. Well, there you go. Is this accurate? I don't know. I, I'm basically on the fence. It really concerns me that there's that, uh, name that's wrong. However, this does roughly go on par with other leaks we've seen before, and quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's genuine. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it's false. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Um, normal stuff, if you've liked it, well, click the like button. If you would like more content, click the subscribe button, and give me a big internet hug. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.